Hey everyone, today we are going to talk about input fields. Now, an input field is an entry box that the user can type into, it's that easy. Um, so let's just go and add one to a hierarchy quickly and then we'll go and talk about it. So under the hierarchy, I'm going to right click, under UI, I'm hitting, uh, I'm going to go to legacy and hit input field. But feel free to use the Text Mesh Pro input field, which is this one here. Uh, the only reason I'm not going to use Text Mesh Pro is just because it's a lot more options. Um, not in the input field itself, but with the text with the text and um, there's loads more options and we have covered text mesh pro I think it was the second video we did or one of the first few videos um, Go check that one out if you want to cover text mesh pro it's in the playlist So I'm going to skip over that and just go to the legacy in uh, Input field they are the exact same concept of the exact the actual input field itself has the exact same options so with this input field you'll see we've got ourselves inside a placeholder and a text. Uh, the placeholder is the placeholder text that appears before the user starts typing. Um, so here it says enter text. So if I hit quickly show you what that looks like, it says enter text and, and as soon as I start typing, it starts appearing what I'm typing. And then you'll be able to hit enter and do something with it. We'll cover some example scripts towards the end of the video as well. The text, this is the text that the user has typed. So if I hit play again, and if I select this text, you'll see under the text component here, as I'm typing in, it's updating. Okay, I've got caps lock on, that's helpful. Uh, it's updating it into this text component. Now let's talk about the actual input field itself, uh, because we know that the placeholder and the text are both just text objects. Um, we can now move on to the input field. So there's quite a bit here, I'm going to cover over all this beginning stuff because we've covered it plenty of times before. Um, text component, now this is the text game object, so that's a child of the input field. So that is what the user is typing in. We would just drag that onto this text component like so. The text is it's very similar, it's linked to the text component, it's the text that the user has typed. This is the text of the text component. Uh, you can set a predefined text for the input field here, so I could say, um, let's say I wanted the input field to say something, let's say I wanted it to say, hello world, right? This now means that when I press play, by default, it's already got text inside of it, and we can clear it and type again, and if we clear it completely, our placeholder's there. So this does actually allow us to have text already, but that's the exact same as typing hello world into our text component. Um, they are both the exact same. So you won't really need to play around with this text too much here. The only thing this text you'd really use for is to customise what the text looks like. So maybe if we wanted to make it red, we would do that here. Um, but I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Next we have character limit. This is the maximum number of characters the user can type. You would leave this as zero for no limit. Um, but if we set this as six, you would see that when we hit play, if I start typing hello world, I can't go above six characters. So this just caps how many characters you can actually type. But if you don't want to limit, just leave it at zero. Next we have content type. Now this is the sort of the category of data that the input field expects. So we have standard, which is sort of like a string, whatever really. Um, auto corrected, integer number, decimal number, alphanumeric, name, email address, password, pin, or custom. I'm not going to go through all of these. Custom, you've got plenty of like options to play around with to make it um, customizable. I'm not gonna cover all these because there's a lot to play around with here. But basically, you can make these input fields do whatever you actually want. So for example, if I put in email address, or let's say, let's, let me go for pin. If I put in pin, and try and type hello world it's not going to work because it only accepts numbers and when you type the numbers in it automatically stars them out so if i typed one two three four all the numbers are starred but you can still see it in the text component and anyway, i'll leave that standard type uh, and the line type for the standard um, you get single line multi-line submit and multi-line new line so single line um, that's where basically everything you type on a single line. Multi-line submit, you'll see when we type in here, let's have a little look. Uh, let me say hello, 
world and then I'm going to hit enter to submit um, you'll see it enters puts it on a new line and we can type again if we then put multi-line new line you'll see if we type hello enter world this time the new line is going on the second line if that makes sense and before the new line was going on the first line and what we had just typed was going down so it just flips the order around if that makes sense so this adds a new line the um, submit one drops down a line and then uses the first line if that makes sense I'm going to leave that a single line the placeholder this is the placeholder text so we'll just drag in not the text legacy we we'll just drag in our placeholder this would be text mesh pro if you're using the text mesh pro just drag in our placeholder carrot blink rate this is how often the mark that's placed uh, in front of a previous character to indicate an insertion like blinks so what I mean by this is if we put this at four so you see when I click in this the carrot is blinking really quick if we made this zero the carrot stays completely still if we made it like two it blinks medium and yeah it's just how quickly the carrot blinks we have an odd one but yeah uh, you also have carrot width so this is the width of the carrot again self explanatory really let's say we're saying hello world and then our little carrots flashing on the end and let's make that four it's just really thick yeah um, custom carrot color this is if you enable this you can basically set your carrot to be a custom color really simple selection color this is the color of the selected highlights if I made this yellow you'd see that when we're typing hello world and we go and select some of it the selection is yellow don't like that I just want to set that back read only this means whether or not it can be overwritten if typed into so if we turn this on we won't be able to type in to the input field see we can't type in it at all so you would use this if you want the input field to sort of display something there are scenarios you would do this for example if you had like a code that you wanted to copy to a clipboard should activate on select as well easy um, basically let me pull this out a bit more so you can see the full name of it click on it and it'll activate okay on value changed this one will call an event whenever the text string changes on submit this will call an event whenever the submit button which is typically enter on the keyboard whenever that is pressed and then on end edit I'm not gonna lie I'm not sure how this one works never had to use it because I think everything you possibly could need is already on the on value change and on submit I really don't know what on end edit does I want to just say by the name of it that it will call an event when you stop typing or click off of it maybe when you click off the yeah maybe it will call an event when you click out of the input field but I don't actually know so let's go and create a couple scripts so I'm going to quickly create a C sharp script and I'm just going to call this my input field and I'm going to open this up. The first script we're going to uh, write is going to output the old string was and then the new string is. So, and we're going to call this every time the string is updated. So, basically, if you remember, we're going to use that on the on value changed. So, once again, not a scripting tutorial. So, I'm just going to make it super quick. I'm going to make a public method, it's not going to return anything. So it'll be a void, I'll just call it um, output state. And then in here, we're just going to print ring has just been updated. Like that. That's all I'm going to print. Let's create an empty game object and call this input field script. And we need to drag our script onto this component here. This game object. And then under our input field, we need to add an event to on value change, drag in our input field script, and add in our output state. Now, if we hit play, you'll see when we type, let's say go in the console, I'm going to say hello. Um, so, hello has five characters and it prints five times. Perfect. Even the space bar works, everything. Now, let's do on submit. So, um, for on submit, I'm just going to say, submitted it's that easy right 
And for this one, whenever the input field is submitted, whenever we submit our whatever we're doing, it's just going to print submitted. So let me remove that event, add one to on submit, drag an input field script, go to my input field, and we want to output state. Hit play. And let's say hello world. It's not said anything. Now if I hit enter, it says submitted. So that's that. So there you go. That is the difference between on value change and on submit. I hope that's clear now. I'm going to quickly try and figure out what on end edit does. Um, I'm just going to print on end edit here. And just assign this and see whenever this prints. Because I don't actually know what this one does. And I think let's take it as a learning experience. We can all learn together. So let's put in input field script. I'm going to add our output state and hit play. And now let's see whenever it prints on end edit. So I'm going to say hello there. So if I, pr if I press enter or submit, it will type it. What if I click on it and then click out? Okay, so I clicked, I've typed blah, 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 and clicked out. Is that the same as submitting though? So if I hit submit, it will do it. And if I also click out of it, it does it. What if I go back to on submit? I'm actually, this is actually interesting, right? Because I don't know this. So if I now make this output state, I probably should have learned this before I did the video. I do apologize for that. Um, yeah. And uh, now if I type hello world, it's got to be with the capitals really, isn't it? And click out, it doesn't print. Okay, and I have to click enter. All right, so there you go. So the difference between on end edit and on submit is on submit will only print something when you press enter or literally submit the string and on end edit will call the event even if you click out the box. So clicking out of the box is not the same as submitting. Hope that makes sense. Um, I really do. If it doesn't, leave a comment. I'll try and explain a bit better. But that is pretty much it for what I wanted to cover. It wasn't a really long video, but it was a bit longer than what we've done already. Um, just wanted to make sure I covered everything. So I hope you enjoyed, everyone. That is the end of the series now. Don't worry, there'll be more stuff in the future. Um, I'm thinking next I'm just going to go back to a few Roblox videos. I'm still going to make some Unity ones though. I've got a few videos planned. Um, but if you want to see anything Unity related or just anything programming related in at all, please leave a comment. I'll add it to my video suggestions. I'm up for ideas on series as well. So if anyone wants to see like a C sharp scripting course or like a Java or any, I'm currently learning Java. So um, I can't do a video on that. But if you want to see Python or C sharp, then let me know. Uh, or Lua, you a bit of Roblox if you want some Roblox Lua. Lua U, I believe Roblox now uses. Um, let me know. Anything really, anything, just let me know and I'll make a video on it. But for now, I'm going to go back to the odd uh, random videos that we were doing before. Most will probably be Roblox because I've got a long queue and some videos were like from year, like a year ago, um, which I just have really been delaying, been sort of um, procrastinating about making. And it's about time I finally get them out. So I'm going to start working on some of them again. Um, but yeah, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please please leave a like and subscribe. I will have a full course video coming out soon, um, probably within a few weeks, because uh, it takes a little while to edit it together. So, because I need to try and make it seamless. Um, where I'm just going to put all the videos from this sort of mini series into one long one, just for people that don't want to go through a whole playlist. Of course, if you've been watching all these videos, you don't you don't need to watch that at all. It's, ju it's literally just for people that don't want to go for a playlist and would rather have it all in one video. So thanks for watching, everyone. Please leave a like and subscribe, and goodbye.